Hi, welcome to our channel Good News. The notion that dominant chip makers, who are overwhelmingly foreign, are doomed has become a ray of hope for Chinese firms, which analysts say lag at least one to two wafer generations behind their competitors. Everyone in China's semiconductor industry is talking about the post-law Moore's era. That's a term that conveys optimism about China's ability to one day outperform the West's indigenous chip capacity. Since its first mention by Chinese Vice Premier Liu He at a meeting on digital electronics innovation in May, it has been frequently cited by Chinese academics, municipal governments, industry journals, private companies, and other observers concerned with China's poor performance in the global chip sector. The concept is straightforward. Scientists believe that advances in chip technology will no longer be able to keep up with Moore's Law by 2025. The rule, named after Intel co-founder Gordon Moore, states that transistors per unit area double every one to two years. While Moore's prediction has so far been correct during an era of dramatic improvements in chip performance, engineers expect to reach the physical limits of existing chip materials, such as silicon, in the future. Unless alternative solutions are developed, chip technology advancements will slow. The notion that dominant chip makers, the vast majority of which are foreign, face a near certain impediment has become a beacon of hope for Chinese firms, which analysts say lag at least one to two wafer generations behind their competitors. According to research conducted by the US based think tank Information Technology and Innovation Foundation, ITIF, in Logic Chips, China's largest chip maker, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, manages scale production at the 14 nanometers level, whereas South Korean Samsung and Taiwan-based TSMC can achieve 5 nanometers. On the memory chip front, Micron and Samsung in the United States lead with 10 nanometers wafers, while Changshin Memory Technologies in China only manages 19 nanometers. Finding the next fundamental semiconductor material, whatever it is, could give Chinese firms a competitive advantage or even allow them to leapfrog foreign competitors. To that end, Beijing has stated that it will investigate alternative substances to assist its advanced chip technology drive. China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology announced plans in August to incorporate carbon-based materials into its plan to achieve breakthrough technologies. Carbon fiber, graphene, silicon carbide, and other carbon-based composites will be incorporated into the country's 14th five-year plan's raw materials development strategy, as well as its 14th FYP's scientific innovation strategy. It is China's highest-level support for this research to date, following discussions in a series of articles exploring the post-law Moore's era by various industry observers, including the MIT's own affiliated technology journal. We need more theoretical breakthroughs, particularly in the fields of compound semiconductor and material science, which are led by the United States and Japan, Huawei founder Rin Zhengfei said during a private speech at an August Innovation Summit. If we only pursue what is practical, we may always lag behind, Rin warned. It's not tried and true. Even with central government support, China's lead in semiconductors is far from certain. For one thing, Pursuing and proven technologies would represent a radical shift in business model for China's wafer companies, which have traditionally placed little emphasis on R&D. For one thing, the country continues to prioritize manufacturing over design. The giant, state-led National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, which raised a total of 138.7 billion renminbi, 21.7 billion US dollars, during its first phase, spent two-thirds of its invested funds on fabrication companies. According to the German think tank Stiftung Neue Verantwortung, domestic electronic design automation, EDA, software tools used to design new chips, accounted for less than 1% of the fund's investments as of mid-2020. Similarly, according to ITIF, R&D at Chinese semiconductor companies accounted for slightly more than 8% of sales in 2018, compared to 18% for U.S. firms, 14% for EU firms, and 10% for Taiwanese firms. Similarly, Chinese firms held slightly more than 6% of the semiconductor patents granted by the United States Patent and Trademark Office in 2018, a fraction of those granted to firms based in the United States, Japan, 
Taiwan, and South Korea, which held 29%, 23%, 17%, and 14%, respectively. If you get 40% of your revenues from the Chinese government, as SMIC does, then you have a source of income that isn't as reliant or dependent on you innovating the next generation of products, ITIF Vice President of Global Innovation Policy Stephen Azell said during a July online seminar. Yang Yang Cheng, a postdoctoral fellow at Yale Law School who studies the history of science in China, agreed. This type of hardware development takes a long time, she explained to Protocol. Making reference to China's history of persecuting scientists and intellectuals, particularly during Mao Zedong's reign, Cheng stated that the country has hampered its own progress in comparison to those that have never stopped pursuing technological advancements. If a few decades are lost as a result of political campaigns or other types of strategies, then this is time that will be paid for later, she said. Furthermore, the emphasis on speed, according to Cheng, disincentivizes unglamorous fundamental research in favor of sensational claims, such as the case of a distinguished, young Chinese computer scientist who declared in 2003 that he had created one of the country's first microchips, later discovered to be based on a Motorola design. These appear to be isolated incidents, but they speak to some systemic issues and contribute to China's current state of lag, Cheng said. Anxiety about separation To be sure, China continues to court foreign companies despite decoupling rhetoric, export restrictions, and increased scrutiny in merger and acquisition attempts from a growing number of Western governments, calling the new R&D push into question. According to data from the Chinese Ministry of Commerce, China's overseas tech investments increased in 2020. According to its September report on outbound foreign direct investments from the previous year, spending on information transmission, software, and IT service industries increased 67.7% year-on-year to $9.19 billion, while spending on overseas scientific research and technical service industries increased 8.7% year-on-year to $3.73 billion. Meanwhile, the MOC is pressuring foreign companies such as Intel, Germany's Infineon, French-Italian ST Microelectronics, U.S. Chip Industry Association Semi, and others to collaborate across borders. Its wish list includes core IP, technology transfers, EDA, packaging, production, training, and other items. According to Dylan Patel, chief analyst at Semi Analysis, some of these collaborations, as well as trends such as talent acquisition from foreign firms, universities, and Silicon Valley, remain gray areas in which governments are slow to respond. However, Given the high precision required of semiconductors, disruption by carbon materials is potentially 10 years away forever, he believes the battle for the foreseeable future will remain in the realm of existing chip technologies that are not exclusive to the most advanced companies. The majority of chips made are not bleeding edge, so you can eat that value chain and move up, Patel explained, referring to China's ongoing appetite for chip manufacturing. It is critical for China to transition from its current, industrial society, to services and become an industrial powerhouse. This type of transition is required or the economy will stagnate, so these types of investments are required. The semiconductor shortage has become a high-profile source of concern for the global economy, and it shows no signs of abating. While the nuances of industry structure and the semiconductor cycle are typically the domain of tech investors, the global economy's increasing reliance on the complex functionality of cloud and AI-enabling chips, as well as process-oriented analog chips, means that future industry developments should pique the interest of all financial market participants. Finding expansion through innovation Technology is having a significant impact on every sector of the global economy. We seek to invest in growth companies that are driving innovation or benefiting from technological advances. Thanks for having your watching in this video. You can add your ideas or suggestions below. Please keep following our channel and like our videos.